It's Nicola Badalana here from PixieHill.com. Today I'm here to show you a project that I created for Gina's Designs Laser Cuts. Um, I've used these really, really cute little boxes. They're called Bagatelle boxes. Um, I love them. They come in five different sizes and you can buy them as a set or as or individually. In each of these, except for this one, in each of these I've added little tiny, tiny vials, little jars filled with glitter and added labels for pixie dust. So, um, if you wanted to buy the boxes separately, you certainly can and select your size depending on the vials that you, that you choose. So this Begatelle box, I'm going to place the pieces down and just make sure that the orientation of everything is fine and that I have all the pieces sort of in the right direction so that I'm not taking anything apart afterwards. I'm going to put this together using um, some white glue. This is um, Eileen's tacky glue. I really like this glue, but by all means use whatever it is that you are most comfortable with. And I'm just putting a tiny dab on both the tab and in the gutter. The reason that I check my orientation first is so that um, it just makes for assembly much much easier and then you don't have to worry about taking things apart and flipping them around and for some of the boxes you may find that the orientation it just means flipping the piece over that's all uh, no big deal So you'll notice on my box there is a tiny bit of excess glue there and all I'm going to do is take an inexpensive paintbrush um, that's just dampened a little bit and I'm just going to clean up those edges. Just the blobs of glue that might dry into little bumps. One of the things that I like about um, the Eileen's Tacky Glue is that it dries fairly quickly. While that's drying, I'm going to take one of these miniature book plates and I'm going to paint it white. I'm just using inexpensive acrylic paint. And I'm going to cover both sides. Now normally I would let that dry, but for time's sake we'll march right ahead. I'm going to add a layer of Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. There are a lot of different products that are very similar to this so don't feel that this is the one that I am endorsing in particular this just happens to be what I have on hand and what I'm going to do is clean off the nib there I'm just gonna give a nice layer over the complete top surface and what this will do is when it dries um, It'll have um, a really nice glossy effect, but it also adds sort of like, um, it adds some height and dimension. The next thing I'm going to prepare is this wooden candlestick. And again, I'm just going to use my inexpensive white craft paint.
While those pieces are drying, I'm going to prepare the little vials that are going to go into my little display. And here you can see some that I've already prepared. These little vials I purchased um, and they already had glitter in them. All I did was add these tiny little labels. You can buy these little vials in all sorts of sizes and shapes. There's a tiny little round one, some little brown vials. I have prepared um, a collage sheet that has all different sizes to fit the various sizes of vials that are available. So if you want to, um, if you'd like to purchase those, they're available, I will post a link somewhere. But by all means, you can also make your own. And the nice thing about the, um, these boxes is that there are all sorts of sizes. So you can fit the tiniest little vials in there or create one that has one single large vial. So now I'm just going to give my box a, a quick coat of white acrylic paint also. And I do this um, because it sort of helps to camouflage if your edges aren't completely even. Um, I'm going to be embellishing this box with some scrapbook paper and if my edges aren't perfect having the white paint will sort of hide any of my mistakes. If I was using a darker paper to cover this box I might just leave it as it is. are drying I'll just show you one little trick. One of the boxes that I created earlier has these little feet and these feet are actually created using the the key plates from Gina's Design Keys and Plates shape set and all I've done to create those legs is I've taken the key plate and I cut it so that I have two matching shapes. So that means cutting out the keyhole in this case. The next thing that I do to create those legs is I'm going to grab a ruler and an X-Acto blade and I'm going to mark just about where the center is and this is just as a sort of guideline for me to know where to put my ruler. I place my ruler right in the center and then line it up with that little mark that I've just made. I'm going to score it with my blade but I'm not going to cut all the way through. I'm just going to cut through the top layers of the chipboard here. So now, I can fold this and it remains intact because I haven't cut through all of the layers and I have a little leg which could go on just like that. So you will need um, two matching key plates if you're going to use this particular method. Um, one key plate will do the legs for the front and the other one will do the legs for the back. And um, what I've done on this piece is painted them black and then added the, the Mod Podge Dimensional Magic to them just to give them a nice sheen and just sort of beef them up a little bit. Once my little box is dry, I'm going to apply a layer of white glue. And 
the thing that I'm looking for when I'm applying the glue is a nice, even, thin layer. And I want to make sure that all of my edges have glue on them. I'm just going to go do those two sides first. And then I'm going to apply this paper. And this is, this paper is from Graphic 45. It's from their Time to Flourish collection. It's very pretty. You'll notice I'm really trying to get those corners quite sharp. And then I'm simply going to trim right along the box's edge. I am terrible at measuring, so doing things that way really helps me. Um, a tool that I don't really see many crafters use, I don't, I don't know um, how many people use them. I used to use this tool when I worked in um, at a newspaper and it's a burnishing tool and what it does is it just sort of makes sure that the entire surface is flat and well adhered. Um, you can get them from art supply stores, they're really handy, I like them. If you do a lot of um, altered art where you're applying paper to stuff, it's probably a pretty cool tool to have. I don't, I can't imagine they're that expensive. Um, what I'm doing right now is just trimming the excess away from from these from these edges. There we go. And then I will apply. Oh, I made that very big. I'm just going to cut a piece really loosely for the top and the bottom there. And then I can always trim up my edges after the fact. Which is probably a terrible thing <laughs> to do, but like I said, I am pretty useless when it comes to measuring. So, however gets the job done is how I do it. I also use my fingers a lot when crafting, and um, I think that's okay. Like I said, whatever gets the job done. I'm going to look at that way better. No, I'll put it that way. Being indecisive, which is okay too. And really, you don't need an awful lot of glue to stick stuff down. It's a very, very thin layer that you actually need to adhere stuff, um, especially with the Eileen's. There's, you don't need a lot. So there's the outside complete. So now I'm going to place the paper on the inside of my box. And again, I'm just using the tacky glue. And I'm not going to worry about covering the bottom or the top of this box. I'm just going to do the, the back and the sides. And this time, to apply the glue, because it's such a tight space, I am going to use a little, um, a little paintbrush. And these paintbrushes are really handy to have around. Just soft bristle inexpensive paintbrushes from the dollar store or the Dollar Tree or what have you. So that gets put in there like that. And then I'll place my little piece in there. And again, making sure that it's well adhered on all sides. 
making sure there's no big air bubbles in there and if I have some extra paper there I'm going to cut it right off pieces dried I'm going to use this sanding block this is from um, coordination's cardstock but I really like it it's sort of gives a little bit of give um, but any sandpaper will do even an emery board that you would use to file, file your nails is fine and I'm just going to sand the edges when I sand I'm pushing sort of off the edge if I pull back this way, there's a chance that the paper will rip, especially if your glue is not completely dry. Now, I like a distressed look on my pieces, so I am going to go over some of these finished edges. If you're not such a fan of the distressed look, what you can do is when you sand, sand on an angle like this so that it's very straight. If you do like more distressing, make the, when you sand, you can sort of sand flatter so that it's taking away more of this edge surface. to fill this little box with my little vials of pixie dust and glitter. Um, I'm going to add a variety of sizes just for some visual interest. Um, the really nice thing about these Begatel boxes is that they do come in a variety of sizes so there's the smaller boxes might only fit the teeny weeny vials, but the larger ones like this one will fit the bigger the bigger boxes. So if you have a problem with um, maybe if you need some bigger boxes for your <laughs> for your eyesight, um, you can certainly do this project on a larger scale. And I'm using cr crazy glue to add the vials here and I'm using brand name crazy glue I'm all for using the cheapo version of stuff to save a few bucks but I think in the case of of crazy glue I do prefer um, the brand name so I'm just placing these ever so delicately in there And I'm, when I'm placing them, I'm actually placing them quite close to the front edge. And that is um, because the boxes are quite deep. So if you do want to add something different to your box, a small treasure that perhaps takes up a little bit more room, um, it's absolutely suitable for that. So, let's see, I've oriented all my, placed all my little vials in there, and they look very sweet. And I'm just going to let that dry. I'm going to set it off to the side. So I think what I'll do next is finish up this, the candlestick. And all I'm going to do is rough it up a little bit so that it matches the distressing on the box. If you keep a consistent look throughout your piece, I think that really adds to the attention to detail. So having sort of a brand new looking freshly painted stand and a distressed top might look a little bit funny. So try to keep the, the look throughout your piece. And again, I'm going to pull out my trusty crazy glue and put a fine 
line all around there. And then I think those vials are pretty much in place. And I'm just going to add it right to the center. And sort of when you add things to the center, when you're trying to place them, sort of look at it from all angles and that'll really help you because it might look fine from one direction and then the next direction it looks totally off. But I think that looks pretty good. So I'll let that dry for just a moment. And while that's drying, I'm going to take the tiny little um, book plate that I painted and put the dimensional magic on earlier. And what I'm going to do is add just my little fairy dust sign there. I'm going to apply it with just a little bit of the white glue once again. I'll apply it to the sides here. And then place it right on top and then sort of fiddle and finagle until it's until it looks just right. You can also use um, these stackable labels. That's what I've used on this piece. Uh, also from Gina's. Um, they're really cute. I like them too. But in this case, just this tiny fairy dust label is working for me. So, to apply this to the top, and I've just lost it in there, give it a shake, there we go. To apply this to the top, I'm going to use the white glue again. Um, the reason I'm using the white glue for this and not the, the crazy glue is because sometimes the crazy glue will sort of react with the paper almost like, it'll kind of stain it, almost like grease. So that's why I'm using the white glue here. And there's that. Now on these little book plates, there's two holes on either side. And you could place, um, you could place a, a tiny brad through there, or a faux brad, or a flat, a flat backed pearl. I'm going to use these teeny weeny little, they look almost like nail heads. I think they're used for, um, they're actually used for, um, for adding embellishments onto nails, but we're going to use them as little nail heads. Right there. I know, I hope my fingers do the trick here. My fingers usually work okay. Sometimes, not so much. Oops. There we go. And sometimes the crazy glue prefers to stick to my fingers than the doodads. Oops. Sometimes when you're working with tiny, tiny little things like this, if you just dampen your finger a tiny bit, it'll make the object stick to it just long enough to get it into into place. I'm also going to add these little nail heads to the corners I think. So again I'm just sort of putting a tiny dab of spittle on my finger to so that it holds the piece into place just long enough just long enough and just gentle enough to keep it there until I can get it to the spot I want it to go so here we have the almost complete piece I've added little doodads on all of the corners and what I'm going to do now is add my glitter glittery embellishments there, I'm going to use this product which is called Stickles and they're really cute. I like them, a, I like using this product a lot. It's sort of like controlled glitter. Um, if you just apply it and let it dry, it will dry dimensionally, sort of like that puffy paint. Um, but I'm just going to squeeze it all sort of over where I want it 
and then I'm going to feather it out with um, with a paintbrush. So I know it looks a bit thick at the moment, but we will uh, make this a little less garish. All right. paintbrush and I'm just going to sort of smooth this out. You can use your finger as well. And really I'm sort of concentrating, I'm concentrating the glitter on the tops and the edges. I'm sort of thinking about if the, if this piece was sitting in um, in a fairy godmother's workshop it is most likely that the glitter would be on these edges and so that's where I'm sort of concentrating where the glittery stuff is. And again, on the base, I'm just doing it on kind of the sticky outy bits. That's where, that's where my glitter is going. And this is really, this is really it. Uh, the finishing touches right there.